Hey there everyone and welcome to Cure Club! Today we're covering episodes 4 to 6 of Star Twinkle Precure. Episodes 4 and 5 feature the introductions of our last two main cures, for now anyway, and episode 6 has the girls dealing with a mysterious black star pen. Ooh, Ushigi me steady. We also get to meet a few more people on the villain team, including a Cyclops girl, this fancy cat man, and a badly painted Warhammer figure. This team is nothing if not eclectic, that's for sure. Big takeaway for this batch. I'm happy to see the new cures in action and super pleased with the team dynamic we're starting to see form. It's very good. I do wish, though, that Elena and Madoka had been given a little more time to get to know Hikaru and Lala before joining the team. Or at least Elena should have, anyway. I do kind of like Madoka just stumbling into the whole Precure thing after stalking the girls and finding out their secrets, so maybe that's fine as is. But Elena, I feel like, could have gotten to be better friends with the girls and seen Fua around a bit more first, which would have made her protectiveness of them and Fua feel a little bit more earned. The showrunners do what they can to get all the girls acquainted in the limited time given, but at the end of the day, it's still a bit rushed. There have been pre-cure series in the past which give the girls a little more time to interact with the existing cures and demonstrate their reasons for joining the team. In my limited pre-cure experience, one of the best I can remember is Karen in Yes Pre-Cure 5, who got an extra episode to deal with her personal issues and the idea of the pre-cures before she became Cure Aqua. With Elena and Madoka, they both kind of just happen to be in the right places at the right times, and the reasons both give for joining Team Star Twinkle are just must protect the floof. That's not as satisfying as seeing a more natural build-up and unique culminating moment for each girl. Lala is the only one who's gotten something like that so far, and even with her, she could have benefited from another episode or so of build-up. Again, the execution in Madoka's episode is a little better than Elena's, showing Madoka's struggle with not wanting to disobey her father. Still, both Elena and Madoka's reasons ultimately boil down to, this thing is too cute to die, so boom, I'm a magical girl. But I don't want to be too much of a negative Nancy, because I did still enjoy these episodes. What I talked about now is just how I think they could have been improved. Taking these episodes as they are, Elena and Madoka are still both enjoyable characters to watch. Also, now that we're past everyone's introductions, we have a little under a year left still to continue fleshing out their relationships with one another. To bring up Yes 5 again, Karen may have gotten an extra episode of development, but the other four girls all got introduced and purified, boom, 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 one right after another, and that ended up working out just fine. Despite the fast intros, I still cared about all those girls by the end of the show, and that's thanks to the development they got throughout the rest of the series. I expect the same will be true for these girls by the time we get to Star Twinkle's final episode. Next, let's talk about those transformations, though. Cure Milky's still the queen bee on this front, but Cure Soleil and Cure Celine's transformations are both still lovely, and both are enhanced greatly by the girls' singing voices. Elena's voice has to be my favorite so far elevating the simple transformation jingle into something more beautiful just by virtue of her singing it. And Monica's definitely ain't half bad either. When all four voices combine in episode 6, it makes the song feel much more full and complete than it did before. Still a bit simplistic, but this will do nicely for the rest of the season, I expect. Going back to Elena for a sec, her whole first battle was pretty great, right? She looks like she'll be the most physical fighter of the team, focusing on kicks, flips, and other agility-based maneuvers. Combine that with Lala's wide-area magic attacks, Madoka's long-range sharpshooting, and Hikaru the human battering ram, and I'd say we have a decently balanced fighting force so far. Hello, speaking of kicks, Precure, can we talk about your thing with athletic cures and soccer ball attacks? Come on, I know it's been 16 years, so I guess we ought to expect some concepts to repeat, but that one seems weirdly specific. I was a little concerned at first, too, about giving an attack like that to the show's one main Hispanic character. Thankfully, though, some Latinx and Hispanic fans reached out to me on that, and the consensus seems to be that, while it's not exactly a creative choice, it shouldn't be an issue so long as being into soccer doesn't become Elena's defining trait, which so far it isn't, so good. 
By the way, I love that the entire school is in love with Elena and Monoka, especially the girls. In addition to it just being adorable, I'm hoping that them having celebrity status at school will make things interesting in terms of keeping all the Precure and alien stuff on the down low. It's already good to see the conflict Madoka has with keeping this big secret from her father, especially with him being a federal agent in charge of alien investigations, I guess. From her initial appearance, I predicted pretty much everything about Madoka's high pressure, all A's, top of everything, rich family life. The alien investigating father angle I did not expect, though. That's a fun twist, and I hope it's gonna drive some strong future conflict. Madoka's already kind of in a hurry to get the whole Precure thing over with so she can stop lying to her father, which could maybe lead to some interesting, reluctant Precure stuff eventually. Or, I don't know, maybe it'll make her extra motivated, which could cause its own problems. Elena's responsibilities to all her siblings and to Sonrisa should also cause some tough conflicts of interest with her Precure duties as well. So yeah, all in all, a fine pair of girls to add to our motley crew! Episode 6 is where we start seeing all four really begin hanging out together. I didn't feel as much of Elena and Madoka's personality traits in this episode, so that was a bit disappointing, but it was more of a Lala-focused episode, so that's understandable, maybe. Her frustrations with Hikaru and the others flare up again, which at first felt a bit forced to me. But upon reflection, it makes sense. Lala is light years away from home, making frustratingly little progress on these rocket repairs despite throwing all of her effort into it and still feeling like the odd one out among all the humans around her. I'd say she has more than enough reason to feel testy every now and then. Aside from stuff with the main cast, we also get to know Mr. Ryo a bit and see the town observatory slash planetarium, which presumably should remain an important location for this series. From the first episode, Mr. Ryo has seemed like he knows more than he lets on, which may still be the case. However, considering he was turned into the series' first proper monster of the week, it at least seems unlikely at this point that he's, like, secretly a powerhouse or something. And... Ugh, yeah. I guess the lack of Monsters of the Week in the first five episodes was too good to last. Hello, random mundane object with a silly face, monster. It wouldn't be Precure without you, I guess. Eh. <sighs> I'm still holding out hope that the Not Raiders can't summon these things all the time, at least. If I1 needed a star pen to create one, maybe that means we'll only see not triggers when the villains have seized a pen? Oh, maybe? Unless I1's studies of the pen have allowed her to recreate that magic without it, oh, we can only wait and see. Uh... By the by, I1 and Bakinyan look like they'll be a fun pair to watch. The bratty child scientist and her eternally patient guardian figure. That's just begging for some further development later in the story, so... Here's hoping the creators follow through on that front. Also, random point, I find it interesting that Tenjo directly calls Kapard a Kappa. So the general's resemblance to Yokai isn't just incidental, it seems. I wonder if we'll get more into this as time goes on? So far we have a Kappa, a Tengu, a Hitotsume Kozo, a Bakeneko, and an Oni. And we still have their sleeping leader, plus Miss Definitely Not the Fifth Cure on the way as well. We shall see what we shall see, I suppose. Oh right, speaking of that clip from the opening. Um, I can't say I'm a fan of changing the opening for the sake of promoting the new movie. I mean, I get why they would do that. It's just not something I like seeing intrude on the main series this directly. Eh. Anyway, past this point, we're done with the introductory stuff, so hopefully starting with next week's episode, we should be diving more into the meat of the series. We're going to start seeing not only further developments in the plot, but also what the series filler episodes are going to be like. As we all know, a Precure series can sink or swim depending on the gulf between its plot and filler. I, for one, am hoping that Star Twinkle's A-plus aesthetic and likable characters can carry it through the inevitable slow points. Again, fingers crossed. Now I'd like to know what you thought of these episodes. Do you like Elena and Madoka so far? How about the new generals? The return of Monsters of the Week? Lala's undeniable crush on Elena and no, you cannot convince me otherwise? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I may feature your comment in the next episode. 
The response to Cure Club episode one, by the way, was incredible. Way more than I expected to see, to be honest, considering my Magical Girl videos get less viewership than my Love Live videos. I mean, I knew a few of y'all on this channel liked Precure, but um, so many people came out for this. Man, it fills my heart to the brim seeing all your passionate, detailed comments, and it was super hard picking out just a few to read in this episode. So even if I don't read yours, know that I read every single comment and I loved all of them. Thank you so much to everyone for writing them. A few people left comments like this, so here's a representative of those. Mari the Shiny wrote, Oh my god, I had no idea you liked Precure. Yes, I do! I'm, I'm not exactly an expert, though. The only series I've seen in full are Yes, Precure 5 and Fresh Precure, and I've only seen a handful of episodes each of Heart Catch, Butariwa, Splash Star, Mahotsukai, and Hugto. I know Heart Catch is a big one I need to continue with, for sure. But for now, I'd like to focus on getting on board with current Precure. Hence this series. <laughs> Walking Girl Koi wrote, I personally am a bit underwhelmed by Star Twinkle so far. It has great visual presentation. However, I felt a stronger connection to the cast in previous seasons like Heart Catch and Hug Toe, where you learned about the protagonist beforehand. I think that's a fair take on it. I agree with you on preferring series that focus more on character development. And if that's a strong enough point against to pull the whole series down for you, I really can't fault you at all for that. Hoping you still enjoy the ride with us along the way, though. Simbly wrote, This is my first Precure series and I love it a lot. When I first heard the singing, I was like, huh? But then when they overlapped later, I was like, ah, I love it. Also, I'm really obsessed with Fua. She's so cute. Sobs. <laughs> I'm happy to hear you're enjoying your first Precure, yay! I think this is the first Precure for a few people here, so I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on the series as we progress through it. Welcome everyone, welcome to all Precure newbies and experts alike, you're all welcome, hey, hooray, yay! Inspiration Date asks, favorite character so far? It's hard to pick, don't make me pick, no! <laughs> Um, I think Lala's been handled the best so far, and she's super adorable. But I do also love me that bright ray of sunshine pink cure archetype a lot, so Hikaru. But I'm really also interested in learning more about Elena as well. She's so good. She's a good girl. Ah! The only one of the main four I'm not really into as much so far is Madoka. If only because, like I said, I feel like I could read her character a mile away. But she's still got some good stuff going on, too. Like, I don't dislike her. And I look forward to fun times with all of them going forward. So, um, god, I don't know. That's not an answer. So, so my favorite character is, I guess, uh, I mean, I don't... Capard, maybe? Can it be Capard? It's Capard, sure. I love this space dork. He's a good boy. Beth F. writes in a longer comment, the fairies are pretty cute. Fua isn't annoying. I swear Toei is learning how to do baby fairies now, which is great. And Prince. I'm so glad he doesn't sit back and scream in battles. He actually helps. Most fairies tend to just jump around screaming in terror or sit there and be their cheerleaders till they have to be like, use your attack. And they're like, no, but they're like, yeah, go for it. Okay, here I go. <laughs> Prince here actually fights with them, which is so refreshing to watch. I agree, I think Prince has done some really fun things both in and out of combat so far, especially his like big jelly balloon form in episode four. He is brave and active and I'm very glad we have this awesome, awesome Squishum on the team. <laughs> so my God, are you serious? Has a good point about something I said last episode. Implying that torrents are somehow inherently safer than streaming websites is a little much. There are risks in both. This is very true. In this case, since we do have a few trusted fan sub uploaders like Overtime Subs, torrenting I think would be safer in this case, but it's important to clarify that torrenting as a thing has its own set of risks. If you're not careful with which sites you go to and who you trust, you could run into just as much malware nastiness as you can from shady streaming sites. It's mostly safer once you've found reliable sources you've had good experience with. Also important to point out, 
that torrenting may not be an option for those who rely on mobile devices or don't have enough disk space for downloads. Like I said, I recommend torrents for watching Precure if they are an option. But the implied second part of that statement is that if they are not an option, that's fine too. Just be as safe as you can, don't catch any viruses, stay out of trouble, and we'll be cool. So that's it for this installment of Cure Club. I cannot wait for the next one in a few weeks' time. Hopefully the girls will have fixed that darn rocket ship by then. See you all again! Thanks so much again to all my patrons who support me every month, especially Anna, Author X, Julia and Kyle, Lavitz, Otaku no Podcast, Rally Vincent, who deserved better, and by special request, here is my very best Akko transformation phrase. <clears throat> I wouldn't be doing this if not for the generous support of viewers like you. You can support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. You can make small one-time donations at ko-fi.com slash Aaron Cerise. Or you can always share this video and leave a like or comment to show your support. Thanks so much again, and have a good day! Goodbye!